this, to kick this off, our last podcast, Matt and I did, had a lot of great feedback, first of all. It was good topics. <laughs> we had, it was good, like, we get heated on CrossFit stuff. But the main thing I heard afterwards, true story, was how much bigger I looked than you. No, it was how much bigger <laughs> I looked than you. <laughs> he had to wear, if you remember, this big hoodie, like oversized hoodie to try to look bigger. Um, and he's kind of doing the same thing here. He's kind of got like a soft upper, this is a tight t-shirt, you know, baggy, tight shirt. whatever. And he's not. You know, he's trying to he's trying to sit up and posture up to the camera. I just have good posture. That's all. I kind of want my slim waist showing. You know, that was. A- Welcome to this week's Go Headquarters podcast. I am Brandon Rocky, and with me again today is Matt Potak, future mayor of St. Augustine. <laughs> that again. And I'm bigger than Brandon. Uh, anyway. Um, today we are going to get into the topic of fitness for today's youth and the reason I've got Matt joining me today on that is he is one of our local football coaches he's in our school system he has two little ones himself and uh, you know so very very influential person in St. Augustine and in the youth community uh, trying to do some good stuff started a uh, strength and conditioning program for middle schoolers um, starting with some of his football athletes recently and is going to hopefully continue to grow that and so we want to get into some important topics on today's youth. Um, first off, let's kick this off with some recent statistics from coming from the Centers of Disease Control. What are some recent stats here? Childhood obesity has more than doubled in children and quadrupled in adolescents aged 12 to 19 in the past uh, 30 years I should say. Um, one of the major topics is in 2012 more than one third of children and adolescents are overweight or obese. So that's, I mean, one third is, is quite a, a large, large number. Um, and obviously it carries over into, um, as these kids get older, it carries over to long-term health um, consequences. Um, and that's when we see a, a large obesity rate today with people that are you know, middle-aged and, uh, and older. So um, it's uh, very important to get it started correctly at a young age, fitness in youth, um, different dietary habits at a young age. It's very good because it carries over to the future. Yeah, this is a really hot topic for me. I'm, I'm pretty passionate about all things health and fitness, but definitely childhood obesity for me rings a bell because I know that I'm going to be dealing with this 20, 30 years from now in the future. This is going to have huge impacts on us in the future when dealing with things like healthcare and, uh, you know, the medical community, and that's just going to have a detrimental impact on everyone at large in this country in particular. We're already a mess with this stuff, with preventable disease control and pharmaceuticals, and so if we aren't doing proactive things to take care of today's youth, we are really screwing ourselves over for you know generations to come. And you know, and it's only getting worse. I don't see this improving anytime soon with with the stuff we're feeding our kids and the lack of activity and everything like that. So that's what we kind of want to touch on today are some of those topics. Um, yeah, a third, what was it? What was the statistic? A third of A third, them? A third of, of children, children and adolescents which are age 12 or obese. to 19 or over That's insane, yeah. one third. Yeah. Um, that's, I, I can't even like get my head wrapped around that sometimes. Um, for me, I don't have kids, so I can, I can talk about this and a lot of you might shrug this off because I don't have children. But I definitely place pretty much all the blame on parents if you have obese children. Um, you know, some of you are going to argue genetics. Uh, I hear parents blame the school system that schools are feeding their kids this, that, or the other, or they're the government. yeah, or they don't have PE at school anymore, or whatever else. Like parents are just constantly blaming someone else, and to me, that is totally illegitimate. That is totally bogus. You're the parent. You teach your kids what they should be doing and not doing. You set the example and the standard. You bring and keep food in the home. Mm-hmm. All of these things. So for me, these statistics come down to parents. Now, how many generations deep are we into this sort of behavior? I don't know. I mean, like the way I, I know how I know how I was brought up in terms of activity and food. You were probably super active as a kid growing up, right? Yeah, uh, off and on. Yeah, I think I was I was pretty active. Um, I think a lot of it has to do with people misleading the parents too, because sometimes parents are trying to have their kids eat healthy, they're trying to get their kids active, they're trying to get their kids fit. Sometimes they will be misled by different food labels, 
um, just things that they hear. I think all in all, parents need to just do a little bit better job researching things, and they need to get their kids, you know, they need to take it more serious because, like we said, it's, it's a big-time problem right now in our country. But I think that, yeah, parents need to, they need to step up, but also they just need to do their own research and not listen to other people because sometimes they get misled. So sometimes it might not completely be the parent's fault. Um, they're hearing different information, so misinformation. Yeah, I mean, you mentioned so you mentioned labels in there for a second, and that Food makes me that made me think of just you know marketing, right? There's no there's no truth in advertising, as they say. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, food labels are we'll get we'll get to nutrition in a few minutes, particularly, but um, yeah, labels are definitely misleading for sure, and so many things are marketed towards children, right? Mm -hmm. Like the McDonald's Happy Meal yeah, is how probably the most fit, famous yeah. one that it's like fun. And they have a toy apples, and there's yeah. A, and they've started to make it a little bit healthier, but not really when they've got juice boxes mixed in there with apples. Some parents don't understand that, okay, well, my kid has a Happy Meal. Well, now we're, instead of having fries, we're going to have apples. And instead of having a soda, we're going to have juice. But what they don't understand is that juice and those apples, that's a heck of a lot of sugar. Yeah. And that's going to cause a major issue in your insulin levels. It's going to cause a major issue down the road with your blood sugar. And some parents just don't understand that those are not healthy and you can't combine the two. You have to, you know, balance it out. Okay, well, if he's going to have apples, no juice, water, um, right. something like that. I think, you know, same thing if you buy something that says it's low in fat. Well, yeah, it might be low in fat, but it's going to be high in um, carbohydrates, sugars. So, you know, there's not a lot of fat. But, yeah, the kids are still going to be, you know, gorging themselves and their insulin levels are going to go up. So there's a lot of mislead, misleading la labels. But the parents, like I said, they've got to do a good job in, they've got to do their own research. They've got to go out and they've got to, they've got to figure this thing out and not listen to, trust, not trusting the food labels and not trusting what they hear from people. They right. Have to, they have to do their own research. Right. Most people are selling something at this point, so mm -hmm. hard to believe them. Um, and then I think, so coming back a little off nutrition again, just staying on parenting mm -hmm. uh, levels. Um, I think home life has just changed a lot over the years. Yes. With advances in technology, we are a very fast paced you know, kind of entrepreneurial society. Parents come home, they want to work while they're at home. They're grabbing dinner to go. Uh, they're not sitting down as a family to eat dinner anymore. They're not prepping that dinner if they are eating it together, that sort of thing. So I think as a habit forming family, like I think things should be a little different than that. I think, you know, the family needs to prepare a healthy, a healthy meal. They need to sit down and do that together. Um, I know that's maybe a little idealistic overall, but that's what we kind of need to need to be getting back to, um, just to establish those those habits for the children, so that they aren't caught up in the idea of like, oh, let's just grab, you know, something, grab something from a eat. fast food joint. Let's just order a pizza. Let's do something lazy and counterproductive exactly. for the sake of convenience, right? Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's just that just comes down to the parents, like. Sorry if that stings a little bit, but I think that's just lazy. You don't feel like prepping dinner, and you are setting up your children to struggle with probably an unhealthy weight the rest of their lives, which means they're gonna have every issue under the sun. They might have relationship issues, tons of health issues, medical yeah. bills, uh, harder harder time getting a job, like everything, right, mm -hmm. can go wrong once, once you know, overweight and obesity trends set in. Um, exactly. they, they don't recover very easily, so. I think that's just totally on the parents. I don't have kids. Some of it's on the parents. I think, like, getting back to it, I think it's, a lot of it is on the parents, but some of it is just misleading, misleading labels. But the parents, yeah, they've, they've but got... But we, we all know, like, I, I mean, for me anyway, when I hear, like, when we go to, when we go to Happy Meal, right, we all yeah. know McDonald's is unhealthy. It's unhealthy. If you took a survey and said, hey, what's healthier, broccoli or a Happy Meal, everyone's going to pick the broccoli. Like, yeah. I think that those are standard things that everyone knows on a, on a common sense level that even if the label is misleading, like I think if we're really put to the test, most people still know like the heart of it. They just don't want to do the, do the work that it takes to get the, the, broccoli, get the broccoli on the plate. Yeah, it know? is. And you know, like you said, we're in a, a society where work is a big thing. Um, people are doing stuff on Facebook all the time or social media. So they come home, they're playing with their kids, but you know, they're, they're doing something on the side, they're not, they're not prepping dinner, they're not doing much, they wanna do the, the fastest thing possible. And if that's getting McDonald's or getting a pizza or whatever, that's what they're gonna do as opposed to sitting down and, and cooking.
cooking a, a healthy meal. Um, sometimes they want they don't want to prep a, a healthy meal. They'd rather make some kind of processed stuff, throw something in, you know, in yeah. the microwave. Yeah, which is not a not a good idea. So right, we're doing cereal at breakfast instead of yeah. making some eggs. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. cereal's so, got more sugar in it than. I mean, it's you want to talk about insulin levels and diabetes cereals where it all starts. Yeah, and cereal is one of the most convenient go-to yeah. breakfast items there is in this country. I know like, people that eat cereal for dinner, for lunch. I mean, they'll just pop in a bowl yeah. of cereal and they'll right. start eating it, which is not. Just read the label. There's a lot of sugar in cereal, even the healthy cereals. Right. You know, Kashi and all that. There's still a lot of there's still a lot of stuff in there. So yeah, you have to it's it's a product. It. It's not food. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Um, so our, our main advice, I guess, would be to parents is, I would I would say scheduling like some sort of a routine to get your family in a routine. That would be from you know rising until until sleeping time. Yes. You've got to have some sort of a system in place to to establish that stuff. You know, what kind of breakfast do you make? If it's setting your alarm 10 minutes earlier so that you can actually prep a healthy breakfast for the kids, maybe maybe taking you know lunch to school instead of being stuck with what's available at school because we all know that's probably not the best option these days. Yes. Um, same thing when they come home. What foods are available? What activities are we doing? What time do we shoot for for dinner? Maybe it's not perfect every day, but it's in some sort of a time range. Give yourself some uh, prep time to get, to get it. To yeah, get give it some lead time and shut down unnecessary activities to prioritize the yes. family time and the meal, the meal prep time. Mm -hmm. You know, don't be multitasking and trying to go through your Facebook newsfeed on your phone you know, and then all of a sudden go, oh, I don't have time, I don't feel like making dinner, let's order that pizza. Yeah. Like, prioritize the, the health and well-being of your family and mm -hmm. your children. You have to. So you gotta set the schedule. tone now, set the tone now. Yeah. So. Um, so we've already hit on nutrition a lot, right? So just, th that's really where obesity comes from, is improper nutrition and then a lack of activity. So yeah. everything we talk about tends to lead back to nutrition one way or the other. Um, what are some other nutrition topics that you can think of Anything, so juice is a big one for me. Juice is a big one. Any kind of, any kind of calories coming from liquid is a big one. I mean, you got juices, which are tons of sugar. And I know people will say, oh, well, orange juice is good for you. It's got vitamin C or apple juice is good for you. It has this, but it's got a lot of sugar in it. And that's what people don't understand. And um, I've got a lot of family members that have diabetes and I've got, you know, people I know that have diabetes. Diabetes is a very difficult, it, it comes from all from sugar. And if you look at sugar, from these juices, man, it's like, wow. I mean, you, you just look at the label. Orange juice is great, it's got a lot of vitamin C, but you know, you better make sure you don't drink too much because if you drink too much, your insulin's spiking very high. And the children start with these juices at a very young age, I've seen it, and I've started to kind of eliminate it from my kids where they're just drinking water. And that's probably your best bet because, you know, the juices are very high in high fructose corn syrup, um, you know, just just sugar in general. Yeah, food coloring, chemicals, and exactly. Yeah. You know, so and that leads to as you get older, people are drinking soda. They're drinking all these different beverages because they they're just so hooked on them. They need they need to drink something and they want that taste, but it's not worth it. I, I would just start these kids on water if you're a parent. Nothing but water. Um, if you want to occasionally, you know, reward them with with the juice, that's fine, but. Just make sure that they're constantly drinking water. They stay hydrated, and also, water is very important because if you don't if you don't drink enough water, you're dehydrated, which means you're going to be more hungry. If you drink water, you're going to feel more full. I know I do. Yeah. The more water I drink, the less I'm going to eat because I feel full already. I mean, water is going through my system, um, so that's another thing. These juices just go right through these kids, and it causes digestive issues, um, and. A very, I've noticed it in a lot of kids too. You drink a lot of sugar, a sugary drink. They're amped up for 30 minutes to an hour, and then they completely crash. That's not good for kids. I mean, right. it's funny. People will laugh. Oh yeah, he's on a sugar high, but it, it's it's not very good yeah. when they are. Yeah, I mean that's not good for your body. Yeah, and that's not a good habit mentally, psychologically, no. to create that the kids are that, that they're high and then they're low, yeah, up and down all day that's every day not instead, good. Of, instead of an even keeled mentality and. Yeah. Uh, ability to concentrate and everything like that. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then the just the old adage of like eating your veggies. Like, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm really, I'm really disappointed in the uh, the majority of families that I know. 
man, there's not a whole lot of vegetable intake going yeah. on these days. It is, it is liquid calories coming in. It is processed foods. Mm -hmm. It is like, Starches, you know, TV style dinner type stuff almost. Yeah. I mean, it's sad that everything is so convenient based. So my main advice to anyone, but especially for parents raising children to set up our future generations for a better world in this country, um, eat food, not a product. If someone made it or had to alter it in any way, add a chemical, add a f coloring, uh, denature it somehow, then that's not really your best option. Eat a food. If, it, if you can kill it or you can grow it and pick it and eat it yourself, okay, then it's maybe on the menu. Other than that, probably not the best option. Or if it's in the system at all, it needs to be very sparingly. And it's also important to stay away from some of these. Now, in certain situations, it's good to have a, maybe a meal replacement smoothie or drink, um, especially if you're, you know, depending on your goals. But for kids especially, stay away from these high, high sugar uh, smoothies. Smoothies are, you know, certain smoothies, I guess. They're not healthy, man. They're, they're yeah. They're I not mean, healthy. Smoothies, they're, certain smoothies, smoothies are, are, you're better off just having a milkshake from McDonald's than drinking a smoothie. I mean. A lot of them are about the same. It, it's, it is. I mean, if you look at the nutrition content, I mean, I, I remember looking at a label of a smoothie and I'm like, you got to be kidding me. I'd rather just get a milkshake from McDonald's. It's probably healthier. Because when you look at all the sugar they add, the, the fruits they add, people think it's healthy, but I'm telling you, they, it's taking them right to the grave. I mean, it's yeah, it's it's rough. So, yeah. so you know, be careful about some of that stuff because that's another thing that misleads parents. Parents think, oh, well, I'm going to give them a smoothie for lunch. Oh, it's healthy. It's got all this fruit and vitamins. Yeah, it's, make sure you yeah. look at the other it, other stuff yeah. it has in it. Yeah, and the kid doesn't like it because it has vitamins in it. They don't know any different. They like it because it freaking tastes good. Yeah. And why does it taste good? Because it has all the sugar content or even worse, an artificial sweetener. Exactly. Um, so yeah, if the kids are absolutely in love with one of these processed foods, you have already gone a little too far in that routine and we need to nip that in the bud as early as possible, as for sure. Because they will be hooked on it and it just, like I said, it leads to other things, it leads to other foods, drinks, and it just it yeah. gets out of control by the time they're 18, 19, even if it's, you know, some of these kids, it's it's younger than that, but you start getting at an age, you know, in your 20s, it's very hard to change your, your diet habits, very, very difficult. Yeah. Um, you know, you've been so used to it for so many years that you have to kind of reprogram your entire mind to change the way you see, you know, your diet. Yeah, when they when they go away to college, right, in that, in that scenario, when they move out of the home for one yeah. reason or another, they are clueless as to how to prep a meal, what to what to buy at the grocery store, other than what they've been taught. Mm -hmm. So if they've been taught about fruits and veggies and, and nuts and seeds and lean meats, okay, that's hopefully what they're gonna go get when they're when they're moving out of the home. And exactly. that's what they're gonna pass on to their children and whatever else. But the other way is also true. If all they've known is pizza and kind of Ice takeout cream. scenarios, that's what's gonna that's be. That's where they're gonna be living the rest of their life. Mm -hmm. You know? Alright, so moving on. Good nutrition stuff. Physical activity, the other, the other side of this, another hot topic for me, this, this one probably bothers me even more than the nutrition because yes. again, it's, it's more of a lazy thing. People not investing in their children the right way here. And for me, this comes down to technology being used as a crutch, the, the iPad, the iPhone, when the kid is rambunctious and needs to spill some energy, they, they wanna engage the parent and whatever, and the parent's busy multitasking, they're doing Facebook or they're on the computer or working themselves or whatever. Maybe they're doing productive stuff, what have you, and the parent's like, here, play the game, play, yeah, play yeah. Angry Birds on the, computer on the, on the iPad. And yeah. this shuts down like everything that was good about the scenario, the kid was amped up, ready to do something, mm -hmm. and now we didn't get the opportunity to burn some energy, to learn how to play games, uh, you know, ramp up the metabolism, all that stuff, and then we just dummied the, dummied the kid up exactly. with angry birds. It's, it's horrible. Do you use the technology much? No, not as much. I mean, I, I'm not gonna say I don't, I'm not the best, I'm not going to say I'm the best parent ever because I'm not, but um, no, I mean, you see it. I bring my kids in here when I train sometimes. Yeah, and, and um, they're monkeying around yeah, and they're jumping, and they're, they're bouncing around. off the walls and playing on the rings yeah. and stuff, and that's what should be going on in and, my ex opinion. Exactly, and I think, I think it's important because even, you know, if you look at it, if you're having, let's say, you know, your nutrition's not good, um, maybe you're not eating that great, you're eating okay, but you're not that great, but if you're out running around and exercising, you're, you're going to maintain a healthy weight, I think. I mean, maybe not as good as if you had a good diet, but you're going to be in decent shape. Um, you know, because we see a lot of kids, we see a lot of athletes, they eat a lot of junk, but they go out and they run, they work out, they're very active. 
Um, so it's important for parents to know, get the kids outside, get them doing stuff. Um, you know, obviously technology has taken over because it's really easy to just say, hey, play this game or watch this TV show. I mean, it's easy to do that, but take them outside, let them run around, get them in some kind of sport, get them in some kind of activity. Um, there's a lot of sports for these young kids nowadays. It's amazing. I mean, when you turn two and three, there's, you already have activities that you can do. Um, I had my child in gymnastics. He does dance. He does flag football now. Um, I mean, he started all that when he was like two, three years old. So get them in some kind of organized activity where they can just run around and, and have fun and, and burn off that energy. It's very important to do that because nowadays you see it. I mean, they start getting into that when they're little, lazy watching TV. Well, what do you think they're going to do in three, four years? Right. You know, when you're four and five and you're just watching TV and sitting there, what do you think is going to happen when you're 10, 11, 12, 13? You're not going to want to get off the couch. Yep. You know, there's no, there's no motivation. So get them outside. I mean, I remember I was, when I was little, it was go outside. It wasn't, uh, you know, there was no, it, there was no request. It was go outside and find something to do. Yeah. Um, I also did a lot of sports, so it was, I was always outdoors, but I mean, I, there were times where I wanted to lay around, but no, it was get outside, go do something. Um, and I think that routine got me more inspired as I get older to make sure that I'm up every morning to work out because I know I have to get up and I have to do something, you know, before before the regular work routine gets gets going. So. Yeah, and and the kids stuff doesn't need to be formal exercise. So even if it's not a formal like team sport per se, football or soccer or volleyball or what have you. I mean, just getting outside and playing. It's dodgeball and tag and... Oh, yeah. Ride your bike. You know, yeah, ride bikes, jump ramps, build a fort, mm -hmm. like make a zip line, jump off a bridge, something. I mean... Jump off a bridge. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, when we were kids, we went to the local, like, train track over water and, like, you know, we jump off that bad boy into the... Into the, into the river, you know what I mean? That kind of stuff. Just anything to be active. Have them, you know, if you and live like, up north, lift the firewood up. I used you to know, whatever it is. It, it's, it's, we're not talking about like getting them into a gym necessarily. Yeah. I mean, at a certain age, maybe that's what they want to do, but just learning how to pray, play and be active and getting them out of the technology realm mm -hmm. and turning them into, you know, young zombies. Yeah. Uh, I think that's, I don't know, just borderline pathetic and again, super lazy on the parents' part. Yeah. And if your kids aren't into it, tough shit like pull the plug on electronics pull i mean literally like smash your tv smash the video games i don't care that will do your whole family good on how to like engage each other each other play games like interact you're going to talk more i think you're going to build better better relationships mm -hmm. and everyone will be better off for that stuff yeah again um, single with no kids so it's easy for me to say that stuff but um i mean that's like how i was raised with brothers and sisters and like so I don't know, that's just how I feel about it. Yeah, I mean, you know, there still can be time for the little games and the technologies, but they make, make sure they're outside for at least, you know, at least every day they're outside for, I would say, at least, you know, 45 minutes to an hour running around doing stuff. I mean, I know my kids are clawing to get out the door sometimes, and you can even do stuff inside, you know, running yeah. around and stuff. Yeah. It's raining out. I mean, there's stuff you can do um, all the time, so. So what would, like, if, okay, so there's, and I agree, there's a time and a place to, to yeah. use the technology and whatever, of course. Yeah. But um, what would be, do you set up like a ratio? Is there like a quota of, okay, for every hour of outdoor activity or yeah, activity? Yeah, you could do that. Every get, hour, you get, you get 20 minutes, minutes or, minutes. yeah, something like that on the, on the computer. Um, okay, so again, you know, setting parameters, setting up some sort of yeah. like, a, like a schedule to allow it, but in moderation. Yes, and it's also important as a family to do some kind of, doesn't even have to be fitness. I know sometimes my family, we go for walks around our neighborhood. You know, sometimes just saying, hey, let's go. We're going to go for a walk around, you know, where the lake is or wherever. Just sometimes maybe set up a routine that way. Like a couple days a week, we're as a family going to go and we're going to go for a long couple mile walk with each other. And um, we're going to leave the phones at home. You know, we're just going to bring the keys and leave everything else at home and just, and just walk the neighborhood, look at Christmas lights, whatever season it is, just, you know, just walk yeah. around, set up maybe a group family time. Um, you know, sometimes bring your kids with you. You know, when you're going to work out, if you're going to go for a run, bring your kid with you. You know, right. put them in a jogging stroller just so they see what's going on and they'll want to do it too. So it, it makes them more excited to do stuff. Yeah, so I see that all the time when people bring their kids in here and the, the mom or the dad is doing squats and push ups, like mm -hmm. the kid is almost 
doing the mirror image off exactly. to the side and they want to come over and they want to get some dumbbells in their hands exactly. and they want to copy mommy and daddy for sure. Exactly. Um, I had my son, he was jumping stuff here, he was doing all kinds of crazy stuff last week. Yeah, so. he hit like a big PR, like a 35 pound, pound deadlift. 32, yeah. 32 pound deadlift. Oh yeah, because he saw me doing <laughs> some form of, yeah, he went up and... I think you hit like a 20 pound deadlift, so that's pretty good. Yeah, right, dude. 450. <laughs> 450, 148. Well, Bryce is like this tall, and so... <laughs> the bar was up to his waist. The bar was like at his waist, so his deadlift, like it came off the ground about this big, but... No, it was actually pretty good. We'll have to post it on here so everybody can see, but... That was awesome. Set it. Set the tone early. That's that's what I'm going to say. Set the tone early because you set it. If if you know, if, and I've been guilty of this. I'm not the best parent. I've, I mean, I've had my kids sitting around and stuff. I mean, sometimes and maybe not fed them the best. But try to just be as consistent as you can. Set the tone early. Make them eat their vegetables. I mean, we we fight the battle almost every night. You know, but set it early because eventually they're going to buy into it. They already starting. You know, my kids already have bought into it for the most part. They'll still. You're always going to get pushback, but just stay consistent, set the tone, and just you know put that dieting in their brains. And when they get older, they can make their own choices. But you know, program yeah. them the way you want them to be um, as they get older. Yeah. Until they're out of the house, it is it is your responsibility. Is your responsibility. You're the parent. So like, what what? I mean, you can't control everything anyone does, that's for sure. But yeah, like, as I get older, when you're talking about young children, yeah. what they eat and and the associated side are. effects, like that is on that is on you as a parent. Yeah. So take take responsibility and uh, let's raise a, a future fit generation here, and uh, I think that'll be good. Absolutely, absolutely, you have to. Awesome. Well, Matt, thanks for joining us today, and until next time, have a great holiday season, and we'll see you in the new year. Cut. Dang, that was a long one, dude. That's because you keep on talking. Whatever. Kidding.